So the year is 1935. You're in India, and you are Gandhi. <laughs> it's a good crowd, a good crowd. <laughs> so you're Gandhi. And you step onto a train as it's beginning to move. And as you board the train, one of your shoes falls off under the tracks. So do you stay on the train without your shoe? Or do you hop off the train and go get it and be late to the event you were going to? Think about that. We'll come back to it at the end. <laughs> anyway, since I was young, I've always had a plan. Go to college, then marry my high school sweetheart, then start my own business, then have two and a half kids, and, <laughs> and live a happy life. But I never had the willpower to do the difficult things which were required for my ambitions. If I'd face a trial, I'd put it off. If a difficult question was asked, I'd ignore it. I mean, come on, I was a kid. I was more interested in finding diamonds in Minecraft than finding my vocation. But when I started at Chesterton, things started changing. Firstly, I stopped growing taller. <laughs> Which is unfortunate. <laughs> but more importantly, I started actually understanding things. Sure, I learned stuff growing up. Two plus two equals four. George Washington was our first president. The moon landing was faked. <laughs> Etc. But I never understood the harmony of the world. At Chesterton, I realized the importance of the knowledge we were learning. From mathematical disciplines such as trigonometry, to historical figures such as Titus Oates, from the philosophy of Plato, to the friendship of Patroclus and Achilles, everything had its place in the story of our world. Because of this, I began to pay more attention during class and started actually enjoying school. And I know what you're thinking right now. Hey, come on, man, he's got to be getting paid to say all this. <laughs> well, you'd be right. I am getting paid for this speech, but I'm not getting paid with money or gold or Dogecoin or, or land. I'm getting paid with the most valuable resource in today's world, knowledge. You see, at Chesterton, I learned that truth exists and we can know it. I noticed the ease with which I fell into sin and realized that without making a substantial change in my life, I would never be happy. I read the story of Beowulf, who swam to the bottom of a lake to slay a demonic monster. And I was complaining about doing my biology homework. All this kind of scared me in a good way. I finally understood that I should strive to be truly happy. And I knew the only way to do that was through Christ. So my sophomore year, I did a program called Exodus 90. It's a fraternity where all the members give up various comforts of the modern world. There's no video games, no non-essential electronic use, no junk food. We have to pray an hour a day, and we take ice-cold showers, as well as a bunch of other stuff. All this for 90 days straight. Now, this was incredibly difficult for me, and to say I didn't mess up a few times would be a lie. But being at Chesterton gave me so many resources. At Chesterton, we're required to go to Mass every day, which seemed like a useless chore at first, but it became the most important part of my day. I could go to confession after Mass, which always helped me stay on the right track if I ever stumbled. And if I was struggling with something, 
I could talk to a teacher or a priest or a close friend, and they could give me some encouragement and advice. Through Exodus 90, God gave me many graces, which helped me strengthen my relationship with him. One of the biggest graces he gave me was the community at Chesterton. The friends I've made are amazing. We're always there for each other and try to keep each other on the straight and narrow. For instance, I remind my friend that eating so many Cheetos can lead to gluttony. <laughs> and he reminds me that telling so many jokes can lead to me having too many girlfriends. There is just such a great sense of joy surrounding Chesterton. All the teachers there want what's best for each student. You know, Gilbert himself once said that the obligation of wealth is to chuck it. Well, the teachers at Chesterton have a wealth of knowledge, and they will chuck it at you whether you want it or not. <laughs> the atmosphere at the school just exudes Christ, from the paintings on the wall, to the lectures of the teachers, to the interactions between the students. It got to the point where going to school was more fun than staying home, and I never thought I would say that. <laughs> now, back to the Gandhi story. So, when Gandhi got on the train, and he realized he lost one of his shoes, he took the other one off, and tossed it under the tracks. He was thinking that it would be better for someone to find a pair of shoes than to find just one. So many times in my life, it felt like I found just one shoe. I knew I shouldn't sin, but I didn't have the willpower to ignore lower goods. I had enjoyable friendships, but they never led me to lasting happiness. At Chesterton Academy, I found both shoes, a curriculum which revealed the way of Christ and a community which helped me along the way. I mentioned earlier that I've always had ambitions, but they were selfish, and they didn't take into account what God was calling me to do. Well, Chesterton Academy helped me reform my ambitions, and I am planning on attending St. John Vianney Seminary this fall. Thank you.